Governor Gavin Newsom announces plans to get the COVID vaccine to the most vulnerable neighborhoods more quickly. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee in for Barbara Lee Edwards. And I'm Carlo Cicchetto. The governor says the state will begin setting aside 40% of all vaccine doses to be divided among 400 zip codes statewide that are determined to be the most at risk. Earlier this afternoon, I spoke one-on-one -on -one with the governor and started with a question that everyone is asking. San Diegans want to know when will we fall out of that purple tier and get right into the red tier? Is this something that could happen in the next week, two weeks? The positivity rate in San Diego is much lower than we've seen in some time. So you're very, very close. Uh, but again, the epidemiologist, this is all determined, not arbitrarily. This is determined on a tiering strategy. It's now in the 26th week. Uh, but there are 12 additional counties, yours included, uh, that are very likely to come out in the very, very near, near term in the next week or two. Governor Newsom, the big problem we're seeing here in San Diego County right now at the Peco Park Superstation that you visited recently, it has been shut down a few times because of lack of vaccine doses. How, as we shift the focus to these underserved communities, are you going to guarantee that the seniors who are waiting for that second dose and are running out of time are going to get that second dose? It's an issue of manufactured supply. The state of California doesn't have one dose, one vaccine in a refrigerator or at a warehouse or storage facility. And the reality is we are constrained only by supply. We've designed a system that goes part of it to provide anywhere from two and a half to 2.7 million vaccines a week. Last week, we did 1.7 million. We're ultimately designing a system for 4 million a week, but again, we're only receiving next week 1.62 million. And those numbers may be confusing, except to say this, as more supply is manufactured, more will be made available. Now, specifically to the issue of Petco, the issue of the second vaccines is being addressed, and we were able to reallocate from other parts of the state to address some of those constraint issues. I have two ninth graders that are itching to get back to school. You've set out a guideline and a timeline for April 1st, but I also heard that you're also offering incentives to extend the school year in some cases. Is that being legitimately considered by school districts? We put $4.6 billion up uh, to deal with the issue of learning loss and to reimagine uh, the agrarian calendar. Uh, the idea of addressing learning loss can't necessarily just be done in the next few months of a traditional school year. And so we're looking to extend not just the school year potentially in the summer, but the school day, provide flexibility with the utilization of that $4.6 billion uh, by districts large and small up and down the state. Uh, so look, the, the deal with the legislature was just hammered out. It was just voted on about an hour or two ago. Tomorrow I'll be signing it. That money will start to be distributed. We can get our kids safely back into school. We start with our youngest cohorts, but we've got to move quickly. So potentially a longer school day further into the summer. And as for those second doses that are so hard to come by, hopefully more of those are being redirected specifically towards Petco Park. I, I mean, that's been a very difficult situation mm -hmm. for many people, but there's a lot going on here. Uh, what about these reopening plans? What's going on next with the tiers? The tier system is being modified and changed. So those old statistics that we've been used to hearing, mm -hmm. the seven cases per 100,000, those are going to go up to 10 cases per 100,000, which means so many more counties will be able to open up once he gets 2 million vaccines in the arms of those people in the underserved community. So he said in the next few days, lots of new guidelines regarding travel, regarding sports, regarding this new tier system as we reopen California more quickly. Yeah, and good news, San Diego's case rate just this week adjusted is just over 10. Right. And that's down from over 15 the week before. So if you're just thinking things are improving next week, if we can get those shots in arms right. in those communities, we could see reopening. And no one really cares too much about the numbers. They just want the businesses open. Yeah, and, so and I think it's coming sooner than later. It sounds week. like it from yeah. that great interview, Marcella. Thanks. Despite the push to get more vaccines into people's arms, News 8 has been hearing a lot from viewers who say while they've got that first shot, appointments for their second dose have been canceled with no way to reschedule. This comes as Scripps announced today the Del Mar vaccination superstation will be closed on Saturday because they don't have enough vaccines. News 8's Shannon Handy has more on the problem and how county officials are responding. Carlo and Marcella County officials acknowledge the problem, saying there's a critical shortage and they're hoping for an increase soon. But for some seniors, that can't come soon enough because the date to get their second dose is either coming up or has already passed. I got the Moderna and I got it at Vons at Highland Ranch. That was back on February 6th, but as March 6th approaches, 67-year-old Lisa Young says her second dose appointment was canceled with no option to reschedule. No appointment, no rescheduling from Vons, no notices, no way to get a second shot. That's where I'm standing. 
Lisa isn't alone. News 8 spoke with 78-year-old Carol Windham, who has gone 42 days without her second Moderna shot. And despite having an appointment at the Petco Park Superstation Wednesday, she waited in her car for seven hours before being turned away. So I, you know, waited all day. And I thought, well, you know, if, if I just keep waiting, I'm not, I'm, I don't have a lot to do. I just wait and, and eventually I'll get my shot. Moderna is struggling to keep up with its delivery goals worldwide. Shipments were delayed due to weather and other supply chain issues. Pfizer is also falling behind. Scripps announced the Delmar vaccination superstation will be closed this Saturday because they only received half the number of Pfizer doses they had planned on getting. We were actually prepared to do 18,000 doses this week because we've grabbed up and we actually only got 9,000 doses total. Dr. Gazala Sharif says while supply issues are primarily to blame, adding to the problem is a federal government directive calling on health care providers to use the vaccines the week they get it, saying there would be continual shipments to keep up with demand. We were managing this very well because we were all holding second doses so we could plan accordingly and then we were given um, pretty straight uh, you know, direction to say you cannot hold any second doses. Pfizer suggests getting that second dose 21 days after your first. For Moderna, it's 28 days. But what if you can't? The CDC says you can delay either shot up to six weeks. Beyond that, there's not enough research right now to know. Health experts advise if you can't find an appointment at the location where you got your first shot, be your own advocate and find someplace else. Now, some places may tell you you can't come here for your second dose if you didn't come here for your first, but that's not the case everywhere like county run clinics. So keep trying and be patient. Thanks, Shannon. California Schools VEBA, the Voluntary Employee Benefits Association, is looking for eligible educators to vaccinate this coming weekend. The group is coordinating vaccinations for local K-12 teachers and staff and says there are still appointments available to anyone who has received an invitation in their school email. An estimated 8,000 educators have been invited to make an appointment but have not yet received the vaccine. Since launching last Saturday, more than 10,000 educators have received their first dose. Student athletes statewide can return to the field now that a lawsuit filed by the Let Them Play group has settled. Organizers of the group announced today that they reached an agreement with the state for both indoor and outdoor sports nearly a year after games were canceled due to the pandemic. Certain COVID-19 protocols will be in place, including testing for athletes and attendance for games will be limited to four immediate family members per player. The county just released today's COVID-19 numbers and cases are up slightly, but so is testing. Today, the county reported 508 new cases. That's about a 3% positive rate out of more than 17,000 tests. The number of cases and tests are the most we've seen in the past week. There were 17 new deaths reported today, but hospitalizations and ICU patients continue to drop. In just one week, both are down more than 20%. We're learning more tonight about the victims of this week's crash in Imperial County. 13 people were killed and 12 injured when a big rig struck a packed SUV near El Centro early Tuesday morning. The 12 people injured were sent to hospitals in the region, including Scripps Mercy and UC San Diego Medical Center. The victims range in age from 15 to 46. We've listed their names and where they're being treated at CBS8.com. The sailor who died in a chain reaction crash near Camp Pendleton has been identified as 26-year-old Aaron Fish. It happened on the 5 Tuesday morning near Bazalone Road. Investigators say five military trucks were traveling in a convoy when one suddenly slowed down, leading to the crash. Five other sailors were hurt. Military families with vaccine concerns got a chance today to hear directly from Dr. Anthony Fauci. The Blue Star Families Organization held its second virtual town hall on vaccines. The group also heard from top military officials who addressed vaccine shortages and when the shot will be available to family members. News 8's Heather Hope has the takeaways from the town hall. From tough questions like when will my active duty spouse get the vaccine to what happens if my entire family has to move in between doses, Dr. Fauci explained to Blue Star Families. It is absolutely critical 
that we get the military vaccinated. Blue Star families or immediate relatives of service members heard from the nation's chief medical advisor on COVID-19, Dr. Anthony Fauci, who was asked a number of questions in a virtual town hall part two, including what can military members do while on missions where they can't socially distance, to what about the hundreds of thousands receiving their PCS or permanent change of station orders? It's a lot of people moving. so. Looking at that, what kind of precautions do you, should people be taking as they prepare for these moves? For those who are not vaccinated, the situation should be practicing the public health measures that we talk about literally every single day. As for children getting the vaccine, Dr. Fauci said it's likely high school age teens will be vaccinated first, then elementary school students early next year. A lot of our families are asking us about long-term side effects and if they should be concerned. Do we know enough about those? The likelihood of a late long-term problem is vanishingly small. The top question on military families' minds was, what can I do if my active duty spouse got the vaccine, but no one else in our household has? When you have a vaccinated and unvaccinated person, I said that will be the guidelines that will be coming out literally in a, in a couple of days. The Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin showed pictures from visiting California troops last week. They vaccinated people in Los Angeles, and at a Navy base in San Diego. One soldier called it a bestowal of trust. An American Red Cross member asked another important question about the vaccine rollout timeline for Blue Star families. When does DOD anticipate having the vaccine widely available to military family members and the broader military connected community? Similar to what we've seen from the, the CDC, we have those tiers and that goes for service members, family members, retirees, etc. Heather Hope, News 8.